Hi, welcome to How To Repair. Is your Beko manufactured washing machine not heating the water? Are you finding that the door glass is cold when it's doing a wash cycle? Or maybe it's not washing the clothes efficiently? Then you may have a problem with the machine. E01 and E02 are two of the error codes related to the heating circuit. One is to do with the NTC sensor which reads the temperature and tells the program what the temperature is. The other is the heating element itself and the heating element might not be working. Now on the LCD version of this machine you may finish the cycle and you have an error code displayed but some error codes are only available in the diagnostic mode. Now these analog type Beaker washing machines only have LEDs to illuminate the actual functions of the machine. Now at the end of the cycle you may have one or multiple spin lights lit up and these are actually errors. Error codes are stored in Beco machines using BCD. BCD is binary code decimal and it is quite complicated for general public to actually understand that they have an error on the machine. This is due to the fact that these positions on the machine have binary code decimal numbers associated to them and when you add up these numbers it actually represents an error code. Now engineers mostly know all about these and they're able to understand what they are but general public might not be aware of them because they're not actually printed in your manuals. Now what we're going to do is take this down off the workbench and test the NTC sensor circuit and also the values of the NTC sensor and we're also going to test the heating element. But the two videos I've put in the description below for you, one will show you how to go into diagnostic mode and find the error code and the other video is to do with understanding the BCD values so you can actually understand whatever you have, especially when you have an analog system. So let's turn the machine off, drain it down and then take the machine down off the workbench so we can test these two components. Okay, once the machine's disconnected from the electricity supply, we need to remove the back cover and the lid to do these tests properly. These are torque screws. On the earlier models, they would be Phillips screws. Okay, I've taken the belt off the pulley wheel just to make it a bit easier for you to see. Now, firstly, you need to understand how the system works. And let me try and explain this in layman's terms. The washing machine is set to a program of, let's say, a 40 degree wash. The washing machine fills with water to the required level which the pressure sensor controls. Once the pressure sensor realizes that the drum has the correct amount of water in for the wash cycle that is going to take place, it then tells the actual program that I'm at the correct level. It then continues into the wash cycle until the required heating is needed. Then a relay on the circuit board is activated to send electricity down to the heating element. Once this is energized, it then takes readings every few milliseconds off the NTC sensor, which then tells the program what temperature it is at. When it gets to the correct temperature or ohms reading, it then deactivates the relay, which turns the heating sequence off and the machine will continue through the wash cycle and go into the rinse cycle. If it does not reach its correct level, it would presume there is a fault and because it didn't reach the heating temperature, it may say E01 or E02 error code and this is why it is pointing you in the direction of the heating element. Now we need to not only just check the heating element and the NTC sensor, we also need to understand the values. And the first thing I will bring you up is 40 degree wash, which I was talking about, is a value of 2,544 ohms according to the workshop manual. 
I would say we're at a room temperature of 21, 22 degrees at the moment, so we can test the NTC sensor. Now, at 20 degrees, it is telling me that I should have a reading of 5,962, and at five, uh, 25 degrees, I should have a reading of 4,773. I am going to set the multimeter up first and test the element, and then we will test the uh, NTC sensor. So taking one wire off the element and doing an ohms reading across this, you can see that we have a value of about 26.6 ohms. Now, understanding that the workshop manual states that this is a 1950 watt element, the resistance value according to Ohm's law calculator should be around the 25, 26, degree, uh, 26 ohms reading. Now, to understand the NTC sensor, which I said just then, we have a te air temperature of 20 degrees, uh, between 20 and 25 degrees. So I would be expecting a reading of somewhere between 5,962 and 4,773, but I would expect it to be closer to the 20 degree than the actual 25. Now there's a small little tab on the NTC sensor which you need to press up and the wiring will come away. Then setting your multimeter to the correct range and doing a reading across the two pins on the NTC sensor, I can see that I've got a reading of 05.8, which is telling me it has an ohms reading of roughly 5,800 ohms reading. Now, as I said, at 20 degrees, it should be 5,962. That's close enough. And you can find out in another video how to test NCC sensors properly because I've done a very detailed video on this. Also, all this information I'm going to put up on the uh, website on the workshop manual so you've got all the readings for you. The next thing that you need to understand is when a washing machine is getting old, the wiring constantly moves as the drum shakes about. And sometimes you can end up with basically metal fatigue taking place in some of the wires. And we need to test the actual wire, each individual wire coming from the heating element and NTC sensor going back to the circuit board. Because if one of those wires had metal fatigue, therefore it wouldn't be getting the correct reading or it would be unable to send the voltage to the heating element to heat. But if these two items check out correctly, you may have a problem with the wiring. If you don't have a problem with the wiring, especially with error code two, which is the heating element, you may have a problem with the relay on the circuit board. And this is a circuit board fault. Normally you would replace the circuit board but if someone is electrically minded and understands how to solder, you might be able to replace the relay on the circuit board. So let's test the wiring going from here to the circuit board. Before I actually test the wiring, I'm just quickly going to show you how to actually replace the element if it is faulty or to replace the NTC sensor. There is a nut in the middle and as you can see, it's a 10 mil. You need to undo this nut and back it all the way up on the thread. Then carefully in the middle of the nut, just give it a tap inwards and that releases the pressure off the seal. Using a flat blade screwdriver or a hook screwdriver, which I've got here, just pull the element towards you and the element will come away. Now this element is sold with the NTC sensor. At the moment, they do not sell the NTC sensor for this model of machine uh, on its own. But the NTC sensor now can be pulled out, and that is the NTC sensor. It is held in place with the rubber seal, and as the pressure is done up, it holds the seal in place. Now, if you do need an element for your washing machine, you will need to use your full model number in the website, and then followed by the word element 
and we should be able to find the element for you. If you cannot find the element for your washing machine, please use the contact us page with either a picture of the identification label or the full model number. To put the element back in, I recommend just putting a little bit of detergent or fairy liquid, whatever you use around the world, onto the rubber seal, slide the element in, making sure that you get it into the correct location lug which is down the drum, then slide it in. Push the element all the way in, then redo the nut up all the way to hand tight and once you start to get good resistance give it quarter of a turn then replace the wiring. I'm going to leave the wiring off now so we can actually test the wiring going to the circuit board. Okay the manufacturer is absolutely fantastic at producing really precise workshop manuals but the problem being is they're not always available to general public so I will copy this workshop manual and put up all the relevant information you need but they do tell me when testing the NTC sensor I should be looking at KN2 socket on the circuit board and also doing a test down to the actual sensor on the heating system, they tell me to look at KN5 and do a check on KN5 and also do a reading down to the actual um, element itself and also testing the sensor as well is a possible problem. But let me just quickly show you how to test the wires and I'm going to connect to one of the green wires on the NTC sensor connection. I'm going to remove the plug, which you can see here. I'm turning my meter to continuity, and there are two green wires on the plug. So one of these should have continuity. Position one has no continuity. Position two has perfect continuity. I'll swap the wire over now onto the other one, and we should have position one giving us a good reading, which we do, and position two now has no reading. That means that the two NTC sensor wires are in good condition. Of course, you would do this for the heater side as well, which would be the red and the red and pink. But what I'd like to point out to you, because I do not believe any machine in this world nowadays should be thrown out because manufacturers are bullying us into replacing machines instead of repairing them. We have to become more responsible in repairing appliances. Now, circuit boards have relays, and it's not that complicated. As long as you understand a little bit about electronics, or you have a friend that understands a little bit about electronics, you have three relays on this circuit board. Two of these relays will be there for the left-hand rotation and right-hand rotation of the motor. The third relay will be there to activate and deactivate the heater. It is normally a higher ampage relay, and this can be tested. We've got another video on the website on how to test relays on tumble dryers and washing machines. I think you'll find that video. I'll put it in the description below for you. But uh, basically, these relays are used on washing machines. They're used on tumble dryers, dishwashers, and even on more modern cookers today, they're using the relays to control the cooker on the thermostatic side. So it's we have to actually get a little bit more advanced as we do repairs because electronics has evolved over the years. But that's basically how to do that. You might also be able to find a circuit board on one of the shopping channels like eBay or Amazon, which is in good condition because the bearings may have collapsed on some machine and the person is selling these parts on eBay because they have come off a good machine with collapsed bearings. So it's always worth trying to repair your machine at an affordable price. There we go, we've connected the wiring up and the machine is heating again. Now do remember I have put videos in the description below to assist you in getting into diagnostic mode, understanding the BCD error code system on the analog LED type, and all the error codes with regards to the LCD type.
Do remember to support the website by buying your parts off us if you need parts as that's what keeps us going and able to make these free videos for you. They do take me quite a while to put together and there will be many more Bico videos with regards all other components on the machine and to do with all the error codes that you can see in the other video. I hope you found this video helpful and remember if we really helped you you can always click on the Bipolar Beer page. Thanks again for watching.